Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Season 7 League of Legends Champion Guide. Today, I'm going to be covering Zed, the Master of Shadows. The Unseen Blade is the deadliest. Alright, so let's hop right into this guide by looking at Zed's pros and his cons. So first up, he does have a pretty strong lane phase, and he is an amazing duelist. As long as he can consistently land his Q ability, he will poke the enemy champion rather low, and last hitting will be rather easy as well because of this Q and his passive. Now since he is that amazing duelist and he does have some nice AoE damage, he also makes a really solid split pusher. He can push the lane incredibly quickly, and if anybody comes to 1v1 him, he can usually come out on top. Now Zed also has some very high mobility. He can usually hop onto the enemy's backline with his shadows or his ultimate, delete them, and hop back out, which gives him his high mobility. Since of course he can do this and he can dash around multiple times, he also has some very high outplay potential. Now Zed however is really weak against crowd control, and he's also a weak team fighter. He excels in 1v1 situations, but in team fights, if he jumps in too early, he will be crowd controlled and die incredibly quickly. Because of his playstyle, he does require a lot of patience, and he is very hard to master as well. Since Zed is an assassin, if he does fall behind, he's going to be rather weak as well if he can't delete those single targets. And finally, he does of course have item counters as well. Something like a Zonia's or a Guardian Angel will completely negate your ultimate, so you have to watch out for people with these items. Either way, in the end, he's still a very fun to play assassin, and he does have his place in League of Legends. For your masteries, you want to go 18 cunning and 12 ferocity, grabbing Thunderlord's Decree as your keystone mastery. Since Zed is an assassin that relies on deleting people with his single combos, Thunderlord's Decree will add some nice additional damage and give you a higher kill threshold. For the rest of your masteries, you want to focus on increasing your damage as much as possible in both the cunning and the ferocity side. Now, if you were, however, against a very hard lane opponent, you do have the option of going 12 Resolve instead of Ferocity as well, just for some increased tankiness and regeneration. With that being said, however, remember that you are an Assassin, and having as much damage as possible is usually important. For your runes, you want to go for Attack Damage Reds, Armor Yellows, Magic Resist Blues, and Attack Damage Quints. This rune setup is going to give you a really nice chunk of extra attack damage, which will make last hitting and harassing a little bit more effective. Of course, then you're going to have that armor and magic resist just to be a little bit more durable, so you're not taking a shit ton of damage back in trades. Now, you do, of course, also have the option of going for marks of lethality as well if you want a bit of lethality instead of the attack damage, but I'm a much bigger fan of going for attack damage, but going for lethality is also a viable option. For your first summoner spell, you'll want to take Flash. It gives you a solid escape, gap closer, and reposition. It's easily the most versatile summoner spell in the game since you can use it both defensively and offensively. Now as for your second summoner spell, you'll want to pick up Ignite. The extra damage it provides will give you a lot more kill potential on the enemy mid laner during the lane phase and can help get you snowballing. You're a champion who relies on having a decent early in mid game and Ignite of course is going to help you out. I don't really recommend taking anything else on Zed because these are definitely your best spells but you could go for something like Teleport or Exhaust but usually you'll want to go for Ignite. Your passive ability is Contempt of the Weak, and this is a really nice ability that adds extra damage when somebody is below 50% max health. Zed's basic attacks against targets below 50% max health deal between 6 and 10% of the target's maximum health as bonus magic damage. Contempt for the Weak can only affect the same target once every few seconds, and this does have an on-target cooldown of 10 seconds. So this here is a really nice ability because it will add a nice extra chunk of damage onto targets when they are low and can help you delete them. Since this is based on max health as well, it can actually do some pretty significant damage to those tanky targets as long as you can get them below 50%. This of course will also work on minions, which is why last hitting is so easy on Zed, because when you last hit those minions, you're going to be doing a lot of damage to them. Your Q ability is Razor Shuriken, and this is one of your main sources of damage and is great at both poking and last hitting. When activated, Zed throws his spinning blade forward, dealing physical damage to all enemies they pass through, reduced to 60% against units beyond the first. Active Living Shadows also throw a shuriken towards the target point. Additional shurikens hitting the same enemy only deal 75% damage. So this here is a really solid ability because of course Zed is a melee champion and this does have a 900 range so you can safely last hit or poke the enemy. If possible in the lane phase, try to hit the enemy champion first with this ability because if you hit a minion, it will only do 60% of the damage. Other than that though, you'll want to make sure you use this after your Living Shadows so you throw multiple shurikens and do a lot of damage if they land. Your W ability is Living Shadow, and this gives you some really nice mobility and also makes duplicates of your abilities. On first cast, Zed's Shadow dashes forward, remaining in place for 5 seconds and being able to mimic Razor Shuriken and Shadow Slash. Zed restores energy whenever Living Shadow lands a mimicked ability on the same target that he does. 
On second cast, while within 1300 units of each other, Zed and his shadow blink to the respective locations, swapping places. So this of course is a really solid ability, and one of your main sources of mobility. You will usually want to use this under the enemy champion so you can land your mimicked abilities rather easily, and if you need to, you can always swap places with it to get into melee range. Landing those abilities is going to be rather important, because of course you get some energy restored, which will allow you to use other abilities. Your E ability is Shadow Slash, which deals AoE damage around yourself that also slows enemies. When activated, Zed and his Living Shadow Slash, dealing physical damage to surrounding enemies. Enemies hit by a Living Shadow's Shadow Slash are slowed for 1.5 seconds. Enemies hit by multiple slashes take no additional damage, but are slowed by a 50% stronger slow. Each enemy hit by Zed Slash reduces Living Shadow's cooldown by 2 seconds. So this here is yet again another really solid ability because it is an AoE damaging ability with a low cooldown on an 80% bonus AD ratio that also slows. When going for an all in on an enemy champion you want to try to hit them with multiple shadow slashes because that 50% stronger slow will allow you to stick onto the target and usually delete them. Make sure you use the ability before your razor shuriken so it'll be a lot easier to land. Your ultimate ability is death mark which will give you some permanent bonus attack damage and also allow you to delete targets. Passively, while scoring a takedown with or while Deathmark is active, permanently grants Zed non-stacking bonus attack damage. He always keeps the highest value between the current bonus and the latest takedown. On first cast, Zed becomes untargetable for 0.75 seconds while dashing behind the target enemy champion, marking them on arrival, becoming ghosted for 3 seconds, and spawning a living shadow at the cast location, which lasts for 6 seconds. For the next 3 seconds, the mark stores a percentage of all physical and magic damage Zed deals to the target, detonating at the end of the duration to deal physical damage. On second cast, regardless of distance between each other, Zed and Deathmark's living shadow blink to their respective locations, swapping places. So this, of course, yet again, really solid ability, and it's the reason Zed is such a strong assassin. You can mark a target, deal all of your damage, get them rather low, and then the tick at the end will kill the target and finish them off. As soon as you do get off all of your damage, if you are confident that it will finish off the target, you can always use the second cast to swap back out, and you of course will be in safety again. Therefore, after a teamfight does initiate, you want to use this on a squishy target in the back line, delete them, and reactivate it to hop back out. For your skill order, you first want to put a point into your ultimate whenever you can at 6, 11, and 16. Then for its poking and last hitting from range, you want to max your Q ability first. After that, you'll then want to move on to maxing your E ability second because it does have a really nice damage ratio and it will do some nice AoE damage. That of course means you have to save your W ability for last, but it is a really strong ability so you have to take a point at it at level 3 so you can actually make your living shadows. It is also viable to max second instead of your E ability if you want a lower cooldown and more mobility, but usually I'll go for the damage and max my E ability second. During the lane phase, you want to try and bully the enemy mid laner as much as you can. Start by dropping your living shadow underneath the enemy and then slow them with your shadow slash. At this point, since of course they are slowed, you want to land your razor shurikens to do a big chunk of damage. If you want to go for an extended trade or use your passive damage and jump into melee range, then you can reactivate your living shadow to jump to your shadow and get onto the enemy. Try to get kills with your death mark whenever you're level 6 or push the enemy out of lane. If you do this, then of course you want to shove the minion wave so they miss the experience and the gold. Now after you shove the minion wave under the tower, you have the option of going and buying if you do have a lot of gold, or you could always roam if top or bot lane do need some help. In the later stages of the game, you're usually going to be either split pushing or team fighting. In team fights, your goal is to kill a squishy on the back line and then escape with your shadow. Wait for your team to engage and then get onto the back line. It's almost never a good idea to start the fight unless you're massive and the enemy has no crowd controls. Now instead of team fighting, you can always split push, it is a great way to put pressure on the map as long as your team is able to prevent objectives and defend towers. You can push waves really quickly with your AoE damage and your high attack damage, so if nobody comes to stop you, you can take out a tower or an inhibitor incredibly quickly. Now let's look at some of your hard matchups, and first up is Anivia. Anivia in general is pretty solid against assassins because you do get pretty tanky for a mid laner, and of course you have your passive egg. Even if Zed can actually bring down Anivia, she of course is just going to respawn anyways. This will allow Anivia to come back to life, and then probably kill the Zed afterwards. Be very very careful against Anivia, make sure you dodge her Q at all costs, and don't get baited by the egg. For the next hard matchup, I've got Annie. Annie's going to be rather hard for you, because she is of course a ranged champion that does have a point and click ability, and she's going to be really annoying for you with her harassment. Then of course, when she is level 6 and has her ultimate, she can instantly kill you as well with her Tibbers. After level 6, whenever she has it, stay the hell away from her. 
I'd also recommend getting an early Hex Drinker as well so you won't get bullied as hard, and if she tries to all in you, you can possibly survive. For the last hard matchup here, I've got Malzahar. After level 6, Malzahar is incredibly frustrating because it can push his R button and pretty much delete you. Against a Malzahar, you're probably going to have to get both a Hex Drinker and a Mercurial Scimitar. The Hex Drinker will help you survive any burst, and of course the Mercurial Scimitar will break the chain from his ultimate. Play passively during the lane phase and pick up whatever CS you can. Alright, with all that covered, let's now look at the item build which starts with a Longsword, Health Potions, and a Warding Totem, or a Doran Shield, Health Potion, and a Warding Totem. I'll pretty much always go for the Longsword and Health Pots, but if I'm against a very, very hard lane, then I will take the Doran Shield. For your core build, you want to go for the Dusk Blade, Yumu's Ghost Blade, and a Black Cleaver. This will give you a ton of attack damage, lethality, 40% cooldown reduction already, and an armor shred. Of course, you'll also have that extra damage on the attack with your Dusk Blade, which will allow you to pop squishies. I'll almost always go for the Dusk Blade before Yumu's just for the extra damage and bursts, but if you feel like the extra mobility is much better, then you want to take the Yumu's before the Dusk Blade. For your boot options, you have Merc Treads against high AP and CC heavy teams, Ninja Tabis against high AD teams, and Boots of Mobility if you plan to spend a lot of time roaming. As for the item pool, you first have the Maw. This is a really solid defensive option since it does of course have that shield if you do get low, and it does add some nice damage at the same time. If you're looking for another defensive option that also has some lethality on it, then of course you could go for the Edge of Night. Just make sure you activate this item before you go for your all-in so you will have a nice spell shield. Next, yet again another defensive option, the Guardian Angel. This will allow you to come back to life if you do get killed in a team fight, but it also adds attack damage at the same time, so it's also a great offensive option. Next, we have our Armor Penetration and the LDR and the Mortal Reminder. If you make it into the late game and there's some very tanky targets with a lot of armor, then you will need to pick one of these up so you can actually deal some damage. Then, if you're looking for some lifesteal, you could always go for the Death Stance. It, as I said, does have some nice lifesteal on it and some really nice attack damage at the same time. Another lifesteal option would be the Blade of the Ruined King. This is a really solid item for dueling people since it does have a slow and it's also great against tanky targets since it has that bonus damage on it. For my example full build though, I take that core build, get some Merc Treads, and then a Guardian Angel, and a Blade of the Ruined King. You'll have an absolute ton of damage from all of these items and be able to delete squishy targets, and if you do make a mistake or something, you do have the Guardian Angel to bring you back to life. And that's all I've got for Zed. If you guys did enjoy the video, please make sure you like and subscribe, and also check out the video description below. I have a link to all my social medias, and I also have things like a Discord server, so there's some you should definitely check out. But other than that, thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I really do appreciate it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy, have a good day, and peace.